welcome back to the Empowered Spirit Show. Thank you so much for tuning in and joining me today. This episode is being sponsored by Ritual and Shelter. Are you looking for a magical place to shop and hold space? Check out Ritual and Shelter online or in Homewood, Alabama. Browse through their bookshelves covering topics such as energy healing, crystal healing, Reiki, chakras, auras, the Akashic Records, shadow work, astrology, and earth-based healing. You can also find herbal teas and tinctures alongside their crystals and oils to help establish a mindful mindset and fluid ambience before meditation ritual work, and reflection. Ritual and Shelter is dedicated to providing one-on-one in-depth conversations with customers to help them find the most efficient healing methods and resources that match their unique interest and energy. They offer tarot sessions, Reiki sound bowl, and crystal healing, and now they are offering witch consultations. Visit RitualShelter.com to book an appointment and bring peace back to the body, mind, and spirit. You can also find them on Instagram at Ritual Shelter Shop, as well as Pinterest at Ritual Plus Shelter. As this podcast goes to air, we find ourselves in the midst of a powerful transition following that new moon solar eclipse. This celestial event invites a wave of change and evolution for all of us, opening doors to a deeper understanding of who we truly are. Now is the time to not only set new intentions, but to embody them, aligning ourselves with our authentic truth. With the energy of Libra, an air element, we're reminded of our connection to our thoughts and the importance of choosing them wisely. Each moment brings a choice to shift away from the overactive thinking and towards a renewed trust in our higher self. We can tap into this profound wisdom of our souls. Libra energy encourages us to seek balance. Are you giving yourself the space to pause and reflect? Are you caught in the whirlwind of busyness? Remember, when we rush through life without recognizing the power of stillness, We risk depleting our energy. Deep within us lies an inner strength, a wisdom that embodies our individuality and core passions. This soul force is a vital aspect of who we are, an intrinsic part of us that demands to be expressed. Are you feeling overwhelmed by the racing thoughts and stuck in the monotony of your daily routine? Do you sense that there's a different way to navigate life but you're not quite sure how to find it. I've been there. Lost, confused, feeling utterly alone as if there was no escape. Sleepless nights and a lack of appetite became my norm until one pivotal day 27 years ago when I was introduced to a teacher who worked with the transformative energy of Reiki. That experience changed my life. I was reminded of this journey recently when I was interviewed for Woman's World magazine, where I shared how discovering and learning Reiki helped me manage my anxiety, empowering me to make better choices for myself, and most importantly, for my children. It's significant that such a well-respected national magazine chose to highlight this topic, reflecting how important it is to bring Reiki into public conversation. I'm grateful to see it gaining traction in hospitals, workplaces, and research. And that's exactly what we'll discuss in today's episode. If you're ready to shift your perspective and embrace change, I invite you to schedule a complimentary spiritual upgrade call with me. Let's explore the number one thing that's keeping you stuck in old patterns. I'll include the link in the show notes. In today's episode, I speak with Yolanda Williams about the next upcoming Reiki Rays Healing Summit. Yolanda, a Reiki master teacher and fellow podcaster, is one of the co-hosts for the summit. In this episode, we talk about Reiki Rays, some of the upcoming interviews, the hopes of the summit, and how you can participate. Before we begin, let's take a moment to pause, center, and set an intention for all of this new energy coming in. So wherever you are, if you can, take a nice deep inhale, breathing up the body. And as you exhale, breathing all the way down, slowing down, centering. Inhale, expanding the breath up the body. 
Exhale, bringing that breath all the way down, slowing down, centering. Inhale, expanding the breath up the body. Exhale, beginning to align the energy, beginning to align the energy, calling in the spiritual body, the emotional, mental, physical bodies, all centering, all aligning. Taking another deep inhale, breathing up the body. And as you exhale, dropping into the heart, right into the deepest part of your heart, feeling all this energy coming in around us. And as you exhale, dropping right into the deepest part of your heart, feeling all this energy coming in around us as you connect your spirit and the greater spirit. Know that you are loved, guided, protected. Let us call in our Reiki master teachers, the archangels, the crystal beings, calling in your higher self to align and center, taking a moment, noticing where you are in this great wheel of life, setting an intention for all this new energy for you, your path, your healing, and allow this intention to radiate out all around you, setting that energy, Taking another deep inhale and exhale, grounding, centering. And as you're ready, blink in the eyes, back open, coming back. Reiki Raise is a global community of Reiki practitioners and teachers dedicated to creating a brighter and more aware future for all of us using Reiki as a main healing tool. They assist and empower an international Reiki community with members from all over with opportunities for personal and spiritual growth. They have a wide variety of Reiki articles and infographics, free guided meditations, free eBooks, online courses, and summits via their Reiki Rays University platform. Since its founding in 2012, Reiki Rays has touched the lives of more than 4 million people, becoming now one of the world's most popular and respected source of Reiki knowledge. Reiki Ray encourages, inspires, and supports Reiki practitioners and teachers throughout the world with their daily practice, business development, and healing sessions. Their goal is to contribute in shaping a better world together. They are providing valuable insights and developing numerous alternatives for Reiki practitioners to grow, to learn, and to expand their spiritual gifts and achieve their full potential. All Reiki lineages and practices are welcome since their entire concept is based on the idea of oneness and interconnectedness. Daily new articles written for Reiki Rays by experienced and trusted Reiki masters in the field are being added added to over 3,000 article database covering a wide variety of Reiki themes. Their Wisdom Library contains over 32 free ebooks with more than 30 different Reiki topics discussed, among which they mention attunements, distant healing, crystals, angels, meditations, and symbols. They have been hosting the Reiki Ray Summit for several years, and that in itself has a world of knowledge. I am happy to say I've been included in a couple of these summits myself. Today, we are here with one of the co-hosts, Yolanda Williams. So let us welcome Yolanda to the show. Welcome, Yolanda. Thank you so much for having me, Terry. Yes, I'm so excited to talk about the Reiki Ray Summit and have you as my guest today and just help to bring this out into the world. So thanks for joining us. Yes. I'd like to begin by asking you to tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah. So currently, I always have Reiki at the foundation. I mean, that's just at the foundation of everything that I do. Um, I started practicing Reiki when I was 33. I can never think of how long ago it is. I'm 47 now. And um, uh, through the practice of Reiki, it opened me up to curiosity just about our function and what we're capable of as humans. And so I studied other traditions, other um, methods of just understanding us energetically, intuitively, um, 
and again, like what is our function beyond just the basic level of our day-to-day -day and going to work and these sorts of things. So I ended up um, going deeper into looking at how all of these different teachings and systems and philosophies were connected and all pointing to the same thing which is why uh, Reiki remains at the foundation for me. I think it's one of the easiest systems for that path of awakening. And so a lot of my work is focused on that. My practice focuses a lot on that. And I share as much as I can with people what I'm learning along the way. So agree. The underlying foundation, all my work, I so agree. Did Reiki yeah. find you or did you find Reiki? Oh, well, it was recommended to me by an astrologer. So I was going through a transition at the time I worked in finance and um, I would have had to move to Texas to keep my job. And as I told you, I live in San Diego, so I, I didn't want to leave. Um, and an astrologer, I went to her just to help figure out what's the next pathway on my life. And she recommended that I have a Reiki session and I start meditation. So I went home, I Googled both. I'd never heard of Reiki and it sounded very strange, which piqued my curiosity. So instead of booking a session, I actually booked a class and then it just, I completely fell in love and I took several classes over the years. I've had several different Reiki teachers, different lineages and um, yeah, just never looked back. Yeah. Very interesting. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I was in major turmoil and uh, I had heard about a spiritual counselor. I had no idea, but I knew I needed help. And she yeah. did the hands-on and she didn't even call it Reiki. I don't recall her calling it Reiki, but that day changed everything for me. I felt wow. peace. I heard a message. And so I started, I started going to her and then I found out you can learn this for yourself. <laughs> And that made all the difference and started practicing on my children <laughs> and yes. started seeing what a huge difference, all of us in the crisis that we were in. So I, I definitely hear you with that. And it is a remarkable practice. It really was, is, it really isn't, it really is a remarkable practice. So mm -hmm. tell me now, how did you find Reiki Rays? So Reiki Rays, um, I had heard about them, you know, they were very popular. I knew that they had a lot of blogs, a lot of content for Reiki practitioners, but I hadn't uh, worked with them, but I, I mean, I, they were everywhere. So I, I had heard of them and I'm not sure. I imagine someone must have recommended me, maybe one of my teachers. I don't know, but I think it was 2021. I was invited to be a, a guest speaker for the summit. And so I went and I shared. I don't even remember what the topic was back then. It was a while ago. Uh, but then the following years, this being the third year, I was invited to be a co-host of the summit. And so I think in part, you know, I host a podcast so as well. Um, but it was and is a lot of fun uh, working with them. The founder, Maria, is incredible. Um, the summit for me was like a beautiful find really because of the diversity and it's so diverse with the people who come to speak also it's global and yeah so that's how I found them or they found me I think it may have been a recommendation yeah I think I joined I think I found them through an email or something and I joined like forever membership <laughs> like okay <laughs> right you know and I'm so grateful I did because like you said, there's so much information and so much content. And yeah, I've been on the summit myself a couple of times and you just can learn so much yes. and just really take it in and just, just so much information. So I do love that she, what she does and all that she puts out. And I've had a zoom with her before too. And I just love meeting her and yeah, I think it's such a valuable resource for all of us, you know, yes. especially because there really is no main regulation. And so right. I think it helps us all to come together to keep in check too. How is this one practicing? How is this one practicing? Not that we all practice the same because the creative force of Reiki allows us to open up and have that cre creative freedom. But I do think it's important that we do have some kind of accountability. And I feel like with all this information, it just helps us to check in. Like, how am I practicing? What am I talking about? For sure. Oh, no, I was just going to say with what they do because of not just the global diversity, but to your point, 
all of the lineages contribute to the content through Reiki Rays. And so you can even learn some things that perhaps you didn't learn in your own Reiki classes that other practitioners are applying. So yeah, it's a wonderful resource. Yeah, so much, so much to go back and listen to and just to have it as a resource, like you said, yeah. and just keep, you know, checking in. And I remember last year just thinking like, wow, I, I don't know if I teach that way. Oh, let me check in and see. And then uh, letting it all integrate too. Right. right. Okay. What are my beliefs in all of this? And how can I then take what I've learned to bring it forward? And I think that's a very valuable for teachers as well, as well as new people that don't really know much about it. And like you said, sometimes, sometimes I am surprised when people come to me and said, yeah, I have Reiki. I never use it. I didn't know you could use it for self-care. And I'm thinking, wow. Right. Mm -hmm. So it is a great way to go back and look and learn. So for sure. So what is the theme for this year? So this year, the theme is rooted in your inner truth, embrace change and renewal through the practice of Reiki. And it is a beautiful theme. Um, however, I will say I personally interviewed, I believe, 18 people or 18 different conversations. Some of the interviews had two people <laughs> within one conversation, um, but the, the topics are so much broader than that. So while there are some um, teachers and practitioners that do focus on that topic, uh, there are conversations that really span a range of topics. And so interestingly, I think one of the biggest ones this year, there is a lot of conversations I've had that highlight different ways people are using Reiki, but not just in the healthcare system, although that came up, of course, there's so much growth in that area. And a lot of practitioners are unaware or don't know how to get their foot in the door. So there is uh, conversations about Reiki and healthcare. Some practitioners are using Reiki, like the co-host, um, Heather, she lives in Chicago and she does something called the Reiki Brigade, where she and some volunteers go and do Reiki for police officers. So there's, there's a lot of information about very interesting ways that people are using Reiki, but also giving tips of how you can, you know, share your practice in this way, if you would like. Um, yeah, that stands out as a lot of conversations about the unique ways that people are sharing. Yeah, I did interview Heather last year, and we did talk about the Reiki Brigade on the show. And I recently saw how many people she trained. So needed. Yes. It's so needed. And I know in my world, I get inundated with like, well, I know what Reiki does. I know how they, but why doesn't everybody else, right? And it's hard yes. for me to believe that, but there is still a big population. And what you're talking about in healthcare, like one of my goals of staying in Birmingham for several more years is to bring it into our wow. hospitals because we have an amazing international hospital. We have an arts and medicine program. We have an arts program. It's like somewhere, some way there's going to be a thread there. So I'm, I'm excited to hear some of the conversations around how people do get their feet in the door because I yeah. am looking for connections and contacts. And I think it's so important. It's such a great integrative therapy and we need it. You know, yes. and one of the things I love about your theme, being that you're an astrology person, <laughs> is yeah. that here we are coming through the eclipse energy, right? And this will air right after we move through that. But the whole idea of like getting out of our comfort zone and opening up to new possibilities and renewing that part of us that can move forward. What a great way to introduce us out into the world is bringing this whole idea of bringing back that Reiki practice. And if you are trained and you aren't practicing, you know, one of the things we teach with Reiki is that you just jump back in. Right. Once you're tuned, you're tuned for life. So what a perfect example of renewing that practice. And you know what? It does begin with self-care, which is what Reiki teaches. And yeah. then we can share it out into the world. Yeah. Yes. How exciting. It, yeah. And one of the things I love about the summit as well is similar to what we were saying before, because you have practitioners from all different lineages and live all over the world. And there's just so many different tips and tools and information that you may have never considered. So you really can learn a lot tuning into the summit, whether you've been practicing for years or you're brand new. And the conversations are held in such a way that I think it doesn't matter where you are in your practice. There's something for you to understand. There's something to expand your curiosity around the practice. But also, I think it inspires a lot of people to um, go deeper with how they're either using Reiki 
personally or how it is that they want to share. And even um, there was an interview about how to create Reiki classes where you can offer CEUs for continuing education purposes. And a lot of people don't know that that's even an option. So yeah, there's a, a lot definitely that you can learn. Yeah, that is so important. I know we've done it through nursing, now through the body-mind connection, yes. yoga alliance. I've started to do energy anatomy for yoga teachers and stuff. So there are yeah. so many ways. And again, to me, that's one of the beautiful things about Reiki. It's just so creative and so open that yes. we can bring it out in so many ways. So tell us a few of the people that are kind of the 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 people that kind of hold the foundation for the Reiki Race Summit. Like who are some of your returning guests that are really prominent in our world? Ah, well, returning, I know one is uh, one of my teachers, Franz Steiner. He um, came back this year. Uh, Lisa Campion, I believe she's been at the summit before, but I had an opportunity to interview her and um, Karen Kaig. She came. Um, Amanda Jane. So Amanda Jane, I love sharing her work with people because if they don't know, she and another woman named um, Zilke, they wrote a book called Women in Reiki. And it is an incredible book where they uh, go back to see how historically, I mean, in a lot of ways, Reiki was upheld by women because of what was going on at the time and war and all the things. So that's an incredible book, Women in Reiki. Um, Not familiar. Thank you. Yeah. Yes. Oh, great book. Um, who else? I'm trying to think. Uh, with well, another thing that is a, of interest with Lisa Campion, she focuses a lot on psychic Reiki. So she and I had a conversation about Reiki and intuition and how the two intersect. And then, of course, with Franz, um, he focuses a lot on some of the foundational practices from a very traditional lens. Uh, he studies in Japan. He has his teacher is a Buddhist monk that he goes to train with every year in Japan. So he really likes to infuse a lot of the um, core foundations, even from a cultural lens uh, to ha help us have a deeper understanding of the meaning of Reiki. Yeah. But there were so many people, Terry is like, 18 people just for me, not even counting who <laughs> Heather interviewed, who Heather right? Interviewed. Oh my gosh. Yes. I'm already yes. excited. Yes. I remember yeah. listening to Franz in a very, like, very like do your practice and the mantras and being in yes. there. I really appreciated that. Yeah. I want to yeah. go back to what you were saying about psychic crazy, because I've had a lot of conversations about this mm -hmm. and lots of times people think when they come to learn Reiki, they're going to automatically be psychic and then they not, and then they stop. So I kind of hold off on expanding the idea of intuition and psychic in the first level. Mm -hmm. Because I think it's more than that with the practice of Reiki, right? We don't have to have that psychic energy. Will your psychic ability grow? Yeah, it will. How do you look at that and how do you teach it? Yeah, I think it really first um, clarifying for people what that means for them. Um, I don't really use the word psychic so much because I think that has a... Um, like a heavier implication, like people have more of an expectation around the word psychic. I but I do share with people the potential of opening up um, intuitively because at any level of Reiki, who knows what someone's natural and, and more inherent abilities are anyway, right? So a lot of people come into this work and they're already empathic. So they already have this sensitivity of being able to perceive energy, but they don't necessarily know how to translate it or they don't necessarily understand why they feel what they feel when they're around people or going to certain environments, these sorts of things. So I do let people know that because in the practices we are clearing our energy channels, there is more opportunity for you to heighten your sensitivity whatever that may be for you. So even if you were someone who was kind of feeling like you're getting intuitive hits or just you're like randomly, I know things, these types of things may definitely expand for you. And actually that's what happened to me. And I, I didn't know that that was a potential. So when I started practicing um, prior to, I was already sensitive to energy, but I had never heard of an empath at that time, but now I know that's what it was. Same and, for me. Yeah. Yeah. And I didn't, 
like it. I mean, I was considered the weird friend because we would go places and I just, for what seemed to be no reason, I wouldn't like being in certain environments. I would be very standoffish around certain people. And so when I started practicing Reiki, all of that heightened. And then I started having more visual experiences with, um, especially when working with people hands-on. And so I personally decided to take psychic development training. So I ended up doing psychic development training. I did Akashic Records training. Anything you could think of that had to do with understanding my intuition, I did the training. And it was really because I realized not only does becoming a clear channel heighten our sensitivity, again, we may not know how to translate it. And that's where I think a lot of fear comes in for people. If you can feel and sense things or perceive things energetically, but you don't understand what it is, that can bring up a lot of fear. And so I do talk to people about the potential, depending on where they are. That depends on the conversation I have. But I also teach intuitive development for that reason, because a lot of people end up having the experience of all of a sudden becoming more aware. Yeah, thank you for that distinction. Mm -hmm. I think that was beautiful understanding because we don't have to have psychic hits or information come in to work with right. Reiki. And right, I think no. that's really important because I think yes. the practice goes way beyond that. Yes. Yeah. And why cut ourselves off from that? And I agree, it will grow, you know, and as we teach the different levels and our Reiki guide, some of that is through the intuitive faculty, right? It is, but we can still have it as a self-care practice and not have to have all that. But I agree. I, I did the training too after two because it's like, what is this all about? Why am I getting these messages? What are these messages about? Oh, no. I was just going to say, Terry, it's funny you say because I was, I recently just had a Reiki retreat and somehow this topic came up and I was saying how even within the system, there's a lot of intuitive uh, work that is implied. So even when we, you know, gasho and we reiji ho and we ask to be guided and then we biosyn scan, like all of these different things are very intuitive in nature, or even trusting, like feeling guided to move your hands, these kinds of things. So again, I think there's often a different expectation around the idea of psychic versus the intuitive aspect, um, which is, I guess, people are more susceptible to that than being like outright psychic. Yeah. What a great conversation. Looking forward to that one for sure. And there is yeah. so much we can learn. Who are some of your newer guests this year? Oh, goodness. Oh, let me look. <laughs> Again, there are so many. Um, well, I do want to say one of the ones that was returning was Torsten. Always have interesting conversations with him um, because of his blend of he focuses a lot of like the science and consciousness around Reiki. But one of the new guests, uh, two of the new guests, actually, one's name is Gwen Allison, and she is out of the UK. And we spoke about how to use Reiki to manage our energy and deal with uh, daily life in a better way. I also interviewed a woman named Michaela Daystar, and she talked about the art of embracing discomfort on the road to inner truth. And so a lot of her work actually focused is focused on what she calls trauma-informed Reiki, making sure that we're practicing in ways where we're not unintentionally inflicting harm, like things like asking for permission to lay hands, where we may think it's okay to lay hands on someone's back, but that person may have encountered something that that would trigger something in them. So she focuses a lot on um, these kinds of things. And, oh, I got to speak with Jojan and Dory, and they are two researchers. They are Reiki practitioners as well, but they are uh, researchers. And last year, I interviewed a woman named Elizabeth. Her last name is leaving me right now, but she wrote a book um, about Yusui Sensei. And essentially, she was saying that the history of who we know Yusui Sensei to be is different than what we have thought. And so from um, interviewing her, of course, you know, that caused a little stir. People were like, what, what does this mean? What's going on? And then uh, 
speaking with Jill, John and Dory this year, they expanded on that information. So um, I'm sure because of the emails that I got last year after <laughs> uh, interviewing Elizabeth, I expect that more people will email, but ask them. It's their work. So they know better than I do. Uh, yeah. So there are definitely some interesting conversations. Um, a lot of new practitioners and teachers that haven't been in the summit before. That's awesome. So much information. Yeah. Yeah. My gosh, I was 40, my 40th birthday, and I am now 67. So that's how long I have been practicing and consistently, yeah. consistently. And again, I think sometimes I take it for granted. So sometimes I have to back up and remember, wait a minute, you know, especially living where I do that. This is still yeah. new to many, many people. Yes. Right. Yeah. But still so powerful in my life and returning to it always. I, I do. I sometimes don't even know where I'd be without it. I say that often. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It totally changed my life. I was interviewed recently by a woman out in California and she put me in woman's world, which is like a oh, major wow. publication. Yes. But the whole idea was about how it really helped me with anxiety and helped me to really, I would say like, you know, to me, I always say it saved my life, but it's so important that we bring these experiences out. But part of it too, is that we do the work, yes. right? So even with all the information, we can read about it all day long and you know this, and I know this, but it is the actual practice and being in that energy and noticing the shifts that can occur for yeah. sure. Oh, a hundred percent. I always tell people at some point, you know, and I learned this through taking so many classes because at first I'm not sure what I was looking for. I just, I just had this feeling there was more information. There was more information, but what I ended up realizing was what I was looking for could have only been discovered through my practice. And so at some point, beyond what's in the books and beyond what's in the classes, the energy itself becomes your teacher. And so I always encourage people, you know, practice your practice. You never know how it's going to open you up, what it will help you become aware of, what you will come to understand. And the energy itself becomes your greatest teacher. So yeah, I think your practice is a hundred percent necessary, important, and is the only thing that'll take you deeper into understanding. I so agree. I so agree. Mm -hmm. And, you know, especially in that first level, like making it simpler, we don't have to wait until we have an hour to do the practice. Right. Like, you know, first thing in the morning while you're waking up in your bed, you know, these kind of ways to finding ways to bring it into your day, sitting at your desk during work, you know, and really allowing yourself just to come back into focus, come back in, let the rest of it go. There's so many easy ways. So that's kind of one of the things I've been focusing on lately. Like, let's make it easy. Right. I know we teach a lot in that first, I teach a traditional Yusui class and I know yes. I teach a lot, but let's keep it simple for sure. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about how the summit works. When does it open? How does it work? Yeah. So the summit this year is going to officially launch um, November 8th through, I believe the 11th. And, but how it works is it's free to register and you can access the interviews and the content for free on the days that they initially are launched. So every day of the summit, the 8th through the 11th, every day there are a few interviews released on each day. So if you sign up for the free version, you have the opportunity to then um, watch what is given on that day for 24 hours. And then the next day you can watch whatever is released that day for 24 hours. So there is a free option. However, a lot of people like to buy a ticket to the summit because that's a lot of content. Right? And so um, you may want to go back. You have to take your time to digest. So initially, um, there is a pretty significant discount. I believe it's maybe around $57 if you buy an early bird ticket. And then after that, the price does increase. So there are options, either free discounted or full price. Um, I do know that a lot of people like to just get the early bird by the whole event so they can go at their own pace. 
Yeah, it is a great option to have. And then you can always go back. I know I've gone back and looked for, I know I saw this somewhere and go back in and look at it. It is through Reiki Ray's University. So there is a platform that you can then log in and have. And again, like you said, there's so many. And I'm thinking if you've interviewed 18 and Heather interviewed 18, there's got to be more than three a day. Like there's just so much content that we can go through and have. So what a great way to do it. And we will put links in the in the episode in the show notes so that you can find it and be able to sign up and get that early bird. What a great option. And it all goes back into helping Reiki Rays kind of continue this process and continue doing. And if you have not looked at Reiki Rays website, oh my gosh, like so many articles and even the social media on Instagram, I'll put all the links in, but all the time just posting more and more information that you can grasp and understand and help your practice beyond the summit. It's amazing how much they put out there. I'm very grateful for them. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So what are the hopes for the summit? So the hopes are, one, that some new people continue to find the summit. There are new practitioners, of course, all the time. I mean, Reiki really has spread and is growing like wildfire. And just like me at the beginning, I know I was looking for all kinds of resources. So hopefully there will be new people that find the summit that come in and join. Hopefully that it will inspire the paths of so many different practitioners But also, I love the summit because I think it initiates conversations within the community overall. Again, like things that perhaps some people hadn't thought about before, or a lot of times you get people, they have an inkling of how they may want to work with something or what they feel drawn to, but there's no information around it. And so believe me, with all the conversations (laughs) in the summit, there is something for everyone. There's even a woman I interviewed named Malaya. Um, I'm sorry, Malaya uh, Roper, and she talked about Reiki and ancestral work, which is a very popular thing that people are interested in. Um, yeah, so I just I really hope that Reiki Rays, just as a whole, continues to grow because of all that they contribute to the community. But I hope that some new people will come in and find and maybe become contributors to Reiki Rays, and you never know. You never know. Yeah, I will say that uh, Tungs had put out an email this week and it was about like the symbols and how you can bring in symbols for what you're going through and, and create them. And I was down in Teote Tacana last summer and standing in front of the Pyramid of the Sun, like I had this amazing download and I saw symbols and yeah. it confirmed for me, like, yes, this is acceptable. We can do this. So even information like that, where you might even have something come in and you're not even sure as a Reiki master and you've been doing it a while, like I have, like, okay, this is confirming. I do feel this and I do know this to be true. So that was very confirming. Even just to read today, it's like, wow, we need information. When I first started Yolanda, there was nothing out. It was like going to the library, finding one book and like photocopying all the information. We did, well, that shows how old I am. We didn't have that. (laughs) I didn't have the internet either. Yes, I know. Yeah. Yeah. Like, oh my God, I remember those first books. And now they've even come out with so many more books. I remember devouring everything I could about Mrs. Takata. I was a single mom raising two kids and all of her stories and how much strength and perseverance it gave me with the Reiki principles and just to be true and honor. And even today, the Reiki principles, (laughs) really being true and walking my path. And really, you know, if I'm going to tell somebody I need to be honest with myself, do I know this to be true? So I think it is still so important that we continue the research and the education and for the medical world too, like now we're having the research coming forward and now we can draw upon it before there was none. You know, and in New York, when I was teaching in the hospitals and the nurses, we started to do some of the research and it was hard for us to put the parameters on it. So it's so good to see more and more of that coming forward. Oh, a hundred percent. Actually, I trained with um, the late Raven Keys in her medical Mm. Reiki program. I know. Yeah, yeah, she was incredible, incredible. And this year in the summit, um, I got to interview someone who was on the panel that she started uh, with, uh, I want to say it's called, it's called Medical Reiki Works. And it's basically a foundation where they are now um, doing scientific research to have more evidence of why Reiki should be available more so in healthcare, but also Raven was trying to push that more practitioners could be um Uh, able to be in the operating rooms because she had the opportunity to do that with the work that she was doing. 
And so they're doing a lot of work to support uh, how Reiki can be very useful uh, post-op, pre-op, and actually during the surgery. So yeah, and we speak about that in the summit as well. It's incredible work. Oh, I can't wait to hear that. That is so needed. And I know in my work in New York, it changed a lot in Birmingham just yes. due to the nature. I was in the hospital room and I was in the palliative care and I was there and it was very, and I was treated with so much respect. Mm -hmm. So finding ways to bring it through. And again, just in our community here, UAB is an amazing hospital. It's huge. It has so much education. And so it is needed. So I am looking forward yes. to hearing that and how we can have more research and how important it is. You yes. and I know it, but it's like getting that information out into the world and right. having the science behind it. I know some of the other practices I do like emotional freedom technique, there's so much more research because it was easier to measure the brain. But Reiki involves the four levels, the spiritual, emotional, mental, physical, right. that there is a lot of free-floating, <laughs> to harness it, right? Free-floating <laughs> information, for sure. Well, how exciting. I am super excited to have access to this and to be able to bring this out and help everyone really find it. We'll put all the links in there. Yolanda, where can we find your information about you personally and the work that you do? If you give us that, I'd love to share that. Yeah. So my website is theenergeticalchemist.com. On social media, I'm at Reiki Radio. Um, but yeah, go to the website. That's the best way to find my work and even about the podcast, all of those things. A fellow podcaster. Yay. Yes. Yay, yes. yay. Yay. Well, how exciting talking to you today about all of this. And as we go to round out the show, I like to come back and ask the question, how do you feel? that working with Reiki can help to empower the spirit right now and all that we're going through. Well, interestingly, um, I was telling you how I just finished the retreat and what happened was this incredible heart opening. Everyone experienced this just amazing uh, openness of heart and the love that was in the space and the vulnerability. And I thought, can you imagine not just how life-changing this is for us personally, but with then how we all will walk out of these doors and what we will present the world with. So I've, I've since practicing Reiki, it's been evident to me that all of us, all of our energy matters because we're all projecting out energetically, whether we mean to or not, right? And whatever our thoughts, our emotions are, our level of consciousness may be, it's all contributing to the whole. And so I've always felt that Reiki could give us all some more mindfulness and understanding of just how important our energetic footprint, so to speak, really is in the bigger picture. I mean, even just in your personal life, right? But definitely this most recent um, class, it just felt so much bigger of we need this right now. We need more compassion in our world. We need more understanding. We need more kindness. And so I think that Reiki is incredibly important as a system to help us all just at a foundation. It doesn't mean you need to be a practitioner or a teacher, none of that. Just to be more loving and compassionate again in your personal life will make a big difference for all of us. Opening the heart. Yes. We each have an energetic footprint and combined with the passion and the hopes and the value that Reiki Rays brings through the summit, we can learn how we yeah. can show up. Yeah. Right. In a troubled world, we so need it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Yeah. So from my heart to yours, thank you so much for being here and sharing all your knowledge and all this amazing information coming for us. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much for having me. I mean, I that's why I even started a podcast. It means a lot to me that we get to have this opportunity to share with people, to share with seekers, to share with people who are just curious, whatever it may be. Um, so thank you so much for having me, Terry. Yeah. Thank you. And best of luck with it. Yeah. To your spirit. Thank Namaste. You. Yes. Opening the heart, feeling this wisdom coming in, being mindful of the energy you put out and the energy you take in is all so important. Reiki can do so many amazing things, especially since it works with the body, the mind, the emotions, and the spirit. It can help you find alignment. It can help you open up 
to a deeper sense of your path and your light. So important. Be sure to grab the link, get it for your library, join us as we move through this summit, and really recognize how you can show up in your energy each and every day. I'll put all the links in the show notes for the summit. It begins in November. Thank you so much for listening and joining us today. I am your host, Terri Ann Hyman. To your spirit, namaste.